Welcome back and in this lesson I'm going to demonstrate to you how you can project your textures using a triplanar method within RenderMan. And this technique is especially useful for texturing complex or large models or even 3D scans that don't have any UVs. So it's great for large landscapes and scenes where you want to randomly project ground textures onto or texturing hundreds of thousands of scattered objects, each with their own random texture. So it's really useful for smaller scale models as well so you can texture them with marble, stone or pretty much anything else you can think of. And of course it can be used to project black and white maps to be used as scratches, surface damage, fingerprints and layering masks over your model. So I used this triplanar method all over the bike for the paint chips and the scratches but I thought what I would do first is demonstrate this technique to you on a simple cube so we don't have all the extra visual distraction. So the concept of this is simple. You project one to six textures from various axes and then you blend or blur the transition between those projected textures to hide the seams to create one larger and smooth random texture. So there are two nodes that you need to begin with. And there is this Pixar multi-texture here, which basically holds what textures you want to be projected. And there's this manifold here, which is this Pixar round cube. And it's very simple to set up. All you need to do is plug the result multi out from the Pixar round cube and you plug that into the manifold multi of the Pixar multi texture. And that's all you need to do to get started to project your textures onto your models. So the next thing you need to do is you need to tell RenderMan which textures you want to use in your triplanar projection. And this happens within this multi texture node. And I've already plugged in this Acid Boy decal that I've been using on the bike gear shifter. And so the magic really happens inside this Pixar round cube manifold. And like all manifolds within RenderMan, it controls the orientation and the replication of textures. So within this Pixar manifold, you have a whole bunch of options and I'm going to take you through them one by one. So the first option here, we're not going to worry too much about this, but this is basically telling RenderMan which texture you want to use from this list. And at the minute, we've only got one texture plugged into our slot. And so this should be set to one texture. And in a minute, I'm going to demonstrate how we can utilize a whole bunch of other textures and then project them from different angles. So the next up is frequency. And this is a multiplier of how many times your texture is going to be projected. So if I take this to four, you can now start to see that we get more replication and then, and then six and then eight and then 12. And this number can vary quite differently from texture to texture. And and normally what happens is that the larger your texture is, sometimes this value can go very, very small down to 0 0.2 or even at times 0 0.02. So the larger your texture, sometimes you may need to go very, very small with this value. So next up is transition width. And this controls the blending between each of the replicated textures. So if I just go ahead here and I replicate this six times, and I'm just going to go ahead and select the cube and press 3, to turn it into a sphere, you can now see that this transition width is at set at 0 0.5, which is its default. So if I lower it, you can see what happens is that the transition width between each of these replicated textures becomes incredibly harsh. So this can be quite useful for things like if you want to splatter stickers onto a model. And then if I go ahead here and I increase it, you can see that the blending becomes a lot more softer and the fall off becomes greater between each of the replicated textures. So if I go to eight, you can see that the transition is much sharper. And then again, as I start to increase it, and it does its best to blend between these textures. And this is really useful when you're doing things like rocks and ground textures, because you'll start to see that as it blends between these textures, the scene between them becomes less and less visible. So let me just go back to the cube. And I'm going to set this back to its default. These next few options here are advanced primvars, and we're going to skip over these for the minute. Now, this object ID allows for randomization within your objects. So if I unhide these extra cubes that I've got here. So these three cubes have the same material applied to them. And if I go ahead here and I start to do random orientation, you can see that on each of my replicated cube, the orientation on each of the faces now starts to become random. And this is where this random source comes into play. So you can randomize it by object ID or also by name. And I can also flip them. And so each of the projected axes, it becomes random. 
and then I can do random offset as well. So now what you can start to see is that on each of the projections, it becomes super random. And again, this is great for scattering rock textures and grounds and things like marbles and you know even seamless textures that you've got from the internet. So random orientation rotates each of these projections randomly, flip does the flip, and then offset moves them. So I'll just turn these off. Now, let me just go ahead and hide these extra cubes. So this next section here allows me to control the projection from these three axes. So I can actually go ahead and turn them off. So now this texture is not being projected from any of the axes. So if I want to project it from the top, I can enable Y. So if I only wanted to project textures from the top axis, I could do this by only enabling this Y. And again for the X, and if I disable that, you can also see that I can only do it on my Z axis. And if I unhide these cubes, you can see that it's the same across all my duplicated cubes. So before we have a look at the Pixar multi texture, I'm just going to reset these parameters here so that now my so now that my decals are projecting from all three axes. So the first thing you'll notice within the Pixar multi texture node is it has this bunch of parameters for adding in extra textures. So I'm just going to add in another two textures to this list. So the first one here is I'm going to add in this wing decal. And then the third one in this list is I'm going to add in this R decal. Now the first thing you'll notice is that nothing happens. So I've got three textures loaded in here. But if you remember previously, I mentioned that we were going to come back to this parameter here. And if I change this from one texture to three textures, so now what you can see is it's using these three different textures and it's projecting them in three different directions. And this is a really good technique for doing things like rocks. So you could have a mossy texture that was only being projected from the top and then you could have a different rock texture that would be on the sides. Now you can see here that we've got randomize next and this works in a way where you can actually start to randomize the colors and the hues and saturations of your textures that you're projecting. So if I demonstrate this by going ahead and I increase the hue, you can see that for each of the projections, it's now creating a different hue. And I can do that with the saturation and I can do that with the luminance as well and also the gamma. And then these next few options here control how the randomization works. So for instance, if I increase the luminance, you can see here that the luminance of my text is, is actually increasing and decreasing. So it's running in this centered mode. But if I just only want to keep the base luminance and make the randomization brighter, I would set it to additive. And then if I want to keep the base luminance as it was in my original texture and then make them randomly darker, I then set it to subtractive. And again, this works with this object name. So if I go ahead here and if I just randomize these up again a little bit more, you can see here that it would either do it across the random ID for each object, but it would also do it across the random names of my objects as well. So I hope it's been a useful introduction to triplanar mapping within RenderMan. And before we finish this lesson, I'm just going to show you how I implemented it on the bike frame. So this is the bike frame and I've hidden all the other pieces so we can really concentrate on the frame itself. And the part I'm going to show you how I did it was these bigger paint chips here. So I started with this picture here that I made in Photoshop out of some photographs that I took of the paint chips of a bike that I found in the garage. And because I'm trying to make this material and this model as procedural as I can do and without any UVs, this is why I've used this triplanar setup of this Pixar multi texture, which I've renamed to paint chips for my for convenience, and also this round cube. And I haven't done anything really advanced with it. I've got one image here which is my paint chips material. And then I've just adjusted the luminance and the gamma a little bit in a subtractive so that each of my projections, it actually adjusts it a little bit. And then inside of my round cube, I've turned the blending of my frequency down so that it's not too soft between each of the patches. And then of course I've got random orientation and the flip and also the offset. So if I just solo the node here for the paint chips, you can see how the triplanar is being projected and then of course I run it through my Pixar threshold to really crunch out these black and whites. And so like I say, I hope this has been useful and I'm gonna see you in the next lesson.